All right, welcome to throwdown number 18. For all of you guys, it's a fun one today. Every three minutes until failure. So from zero to three, you'll do two rounds of six squat cleans, six chest to bars. It's 135.95 and the weight will stay the same throughout. If you finish this, you will wait until a three minute mark. And then from three to six, two rounds of seven and nine. If you make that, you'll wait till a six minute mark. From six to nine, you'll do two rounds of eight and 12 and so on and so forth. How it works is you'll add one clean and three chest of bars each time you go to the next set, which will be another three minute block. Training Bank Tank Throwdown 18. Yeah! Hello friends, welcome to week 18 of the Throwdown. My name is Brandon Dorman. And I'm Max El Hajj. Howdy boys! Hello. <laughs> We are in the middle of open prep right now in our online training program, The Design. You can follow for free at trainingthinktank.com. If you are new to this series, this is where we announce a workout and invite all of you to do it with our Training Think Tank community. We do the workout a week ahead of time so that you can get a demo, some tips, and some strategy. This week's demo is Luke Parker. One, all right, Luke Parker, new demo this week. Oh, he started with some touch and goes. Yes. What? Well, he did two? He, it's funny because I don't think I've ever seen him pace, and I thought when he went touch and go, he wasn't gonna pace again. Yeah. He ended up pacing it, probably overpacing the entire workout, but I think he started with all twos here. Yeah, I don't think that format of barbell cycling is the best strategy to go if you're gonna use barbell cycling. Um, I feel like if you're gonna do touch and go, it makes sense to do bigger than doubles yeah, because I agree. a double's probably not gonna save you that much time, but he still did pretty well in the workout. Yeah. Yeah, but these are things that people can start to think about leading into the open, because we're four or five weeks out. Uh, if you are going to do touch and go sets, like you said, it's better to do bigger sets. There are a couple people that went singles in the background and were faster, because what happens is you do doubles and then you take a longer break, and then if you look at the overall rest times, they end up being much more than if you just did fast singles. Yeah. Yeah, and he broke the chest of bars into three and three. He gets pretty right. deep into this workout as we continue to go, so it's just a model that you... It, this workout, similar to something like 17.3, it's not necessary to do big sets. I right. think people get trapped in that mindset of thinking like, I gotta go quick, I gotta get through, I gotta maximize my total amount of rest in an interval, mm -hmm. or it's only six, and you don't think about that just taking a lot of extra energy out of you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we think about, so the overhead squat chest bar workout that was 14-2, 15-2, people did singles and got very deep in that one. 17-3, I had some guys and girls do singles and got all the way to the last bar. So obviously it's workout dependent and some may require you to go a little bit faster, but this one, uh, it, you, there's some built-in rest time, so breaking yeah. up early is totally fine. Yeah, I like this format. You know, it kind of brings in a new component when, if, if this was something like 19.2 or 16.2, then you would continually be working. Right. So he would just have started his next round. But with these mandatory rest breaks, he finished in about 90 seconds. You got a minute 30 to stand around there. You're not super fatigued yet. Your body's kind of clearing some of the recovery and you have to deal with some of that like psychology and you don't get to build up any extra time. So you got to weigh for yourself like, if you're pacing it in this first interval and you know you can do it in 90 seconds, is it worth doing it in 90 or is it, or should you do it in two minutes and get a minute of rest? And I think that's different depending on different athletes. Like I For wanted sure. as much rest time as I possibly could get, even if I had to work a little harder to get that because full recovery for me is better than like 45 seconds of being like, oh, well, I was at 90% effort. So yeah. I think that's like, these are gonna be little games that people are gonna have to figure out for a workout like this. And 14.2 and 15.2, it was, was the same thing. Was exactly right? like this, yeah. had to wait until the interval was over. Yeah, the intervals were a little bit faster as far as the, the rep speed because it's just overhead squat so you can go up and down. Squat clean takes a little bit longer, but obviously the reps are less here. So um, you're not gonna see as many chest to bars in a workout like this, but that was intentional. Yeah, but as we're in open prep, that's kind of some of the themes with the coaches that are designing, so you designed this one, but as you're designing the workouts, we're thinking about things like that. Like last week was a new handstand push-up standard yep. that people have to deal with this one's an interval based workout and there's some you know novel stuff coming up in training for the next throwdowns just as an opportunity for people to get exposure to things that have come out in the open in the past and then therefore could potentially come out in this year's open right what, what I was thinking here is I wanted to start building up some of the the volume that you may see in the open so the total chest of bars are not near what they are in 14-2 or 15-2 yeah. but since we're still five weeks out and kind of just keeping it where yeah. everyone can, can get through a few rounds and not do 200 chest of bars like some guys and girls did in 15-2. Yeah, so Luke here, 
his, overall, just as a trainee, he's got a really, really big engine and just like overall, just like super athletic, good movement quality, but he's actually relatively new to the sport and little things that you see that he basically has to refine if you're comparing him to somebody like Travis or Noah is, you know, his movement quality on chest to bars. You saw like his rhythm gets off a tiny bit. Um, doing touch and go doubles that probably doesn't make sense in a workout that just has six cleans yeah. probably doing singles So there's always like little details that you could nitpick to You know help people get better from a long-term development standpoint, but that's probably going to be true for anybody that's just Competing in fitness or CrossFit. Yeah, for sure uh, There's some things that you definitely can take from workouts like this those the, the thing that I've been telling all my athletes now is, you know, the, the hay's almost in the barn leading into the open. And so now it's more about picking up a little bit more skill, movement economy, figuring out ways to do things that basically just take less effort to do the movement and less about building someone's capacity. So like for him, obviously he can continue to refine his chest bar technique. He's, his legs are a little loose, um, which caused some of the rhythm issues that he had in the last um, set. And then with his squat cleans, which we'll see when he comes back to the, the, the bar in a second, you'll notice that he's coming all the way to full extension and then like a really aggressive pull underneath it. Whereas if you watch some people in later heats that have done this for a while, they kind of are, it's almost like a cyclical movement with the squat cleans at that load. Obviously if it's like 225 or 275 yeah. for a male, you've got to create some tension. But for this right now, it's more like nice and smooth, get underneath it. And then instead of trying to, to express a lot of power out of the hole, it's more like just slowly stand up with yeah. it. Yeah, this is one of the weird things about the sport. Like for me, when I did this, I was, I hung onto the bar, kind of pulled it with my upper body and dropped under because I was trying to save my hips for chest of bars sure. because I knew for me, that's the crux of this workout is if those go and I can't use my hips to get to the bar, I'm just gonna be failing chest of bars or doing singles. So I tried to do that. And then I realized over time that was taxing my upper body and my grip. So it's kind of this delicate balance of trying yeah. to figure out what's a good technique to use. It's definitely not optimal Olympic lifting 1RM technique, yep. but it's just a different sport. It's a different application or a different use with the barbell. So you got to kind of figure out those strategies. Yeah, so if you look at him here. Yeah, one thing I do notice with almost everybody that they default into is a much higher hip start when you're doing like light repeat yeah. cycling that most people are gonna benefit from bending over and grabbing kind of like Luke is here, where his butt's not set all the way down. He's not pushing through his legs. He's not maintaining his back angle the same way that he would need to if that was a, a 275 clean, for example. So those are types of like little strategy or technical strategy details that I think get adjusted when you're starting to compete in qualifier style workouts. Yes. Yeah. Another thing you can look at is you notice he started in basically his power position or his jumping position and then went to a landing position. Uh, one thing that people can play around with is just starting in their landing position so you're not moving the feet, you're not actually having to bring your feet off the ground. It's athlete dependent on how heavy 135 or 95 is for you, but for most people now in the sport, 135, 95 is light enough where you don't have to really create a lot of extension. Yeah. Yeah, still really good elasticity, really good rebound ability in that chest to bar. So that hasn't really broken down. This is interval three. So how many reps are we at right now? We'd be at so eight and 12. Eight cleans, 12 chest to bars. This yeah. was like a real gut check round for me to get through. Um, I think this was the round where most people on site, it's the first two rounds are kind of like just an inconvenience. And then this round was like, okay, I got to speed up a little bit. And the chest bar started to get a little bit harder. And then obviously that following round is where a lot of people got stuck. Yeah. And also the psychology of finishing a work interval. So I finished this interval at like 8.58 or something like that. And then knowing you got to go right back in after you just sold out to get through is yeah. a very weird psychological experience that almost makes you feel worse. I kept telling myself like, you're okay, get your stuff together, just start doing cleans, they're only 135, you're not gonna fail, it's slow enough, you'll be able to like figure it out. But I think that's gonna happen to everybody, it's just where does that happen? Yeah. Does that happen to you in round two, round three, round four? But at, at some point you're likely to have to fight through the end of an interval, which yeah. is a, an interesting and fun way to kind of go after a workout like yeah, this. Yeah, and I like that. I like the mental chaos because that's what almost every open workout brings. Yeah. You go a little bit harder than you do in training, whether you admit to it or not, and then you, you get to that point. Maybe it's 15 minutes into a 20 minute AMRAP if that's gonna be 20.1 or whatever it is for you. You have to figure out, you, you gotta make that decision at that point. Am I gonna keep going hard? Am I gonna finish this interval or am I gonna pull back? Yeah. And, uh, and this workout forces you in whatever round that is for you to either push or pull back. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is a, so Luke's resting here in his third interval. He'll be going into four. I think one a good thing to point out for people in open prep is that some of open prep is, is constructing workouts like this that have similar themes to things we've seen in the past, but some of it is literally just a mindset of mm -hmm. just being prepared to see something novel, test it, get into it and try to put your best effort and figure out ahead of time a strategy and a plan, which is different than other sports. Like, you know, you go and compete at a track meet, you know you're gonna be running your races in 800 yep. or a mile or whatever it is. In here, we're going into a competition, we have no idea what's actually coming out. So how do you prepare for that? A lot of it is building the psychology around fatigue and around your current subset of skills. So I think that's a good thing for people to work on as they're going through these last couple of weeks of open prep is pay attention to where your limits are and how to maximize you know, your points, your scores, not necessarily about like perfect movement quality, driving up one RMs, driving up, you know, like you said, the haze in the barn already. So I think people can start to think about those mindset issues for themselves. Yeah, one of the things I've started to recommend is for people to start filming themselves now if they're not doing that in, in testers like this, and then kind of start nitpicking the things that you can get better again, that are just like free to everyone, like easy things. Like, oh man, I dropped my rope and let it tangle, or I didn't jump up in the, when I should have for the toes to bar, or man, my squat clean technique got a little sloppy and I know I can be better than that. And so if you start doing that now, when we get into the open, you now know have a method in place for when you want to do film review and then you can get better on your second attempt. Yeah. Where are we in time right now? Won't see the clock. Yeah. So he's, he's, oh. he, he pushes this, I mean, I think he's probably got about 90 seconds. Yeah, he's at 10.30 yeah, right now. Yeah, so we got 90 seconds. And he has uh, nine squat cleans and 15 chest bars. He finishes this round, so that's a spoiler alert. But this yeah. is this is what we were talking about earlier. You've got to make no, that that's decision. A spoiler. <laughs> oh, spoiler. Yeah, that was a spoiler. There was no alert. <laughs> alert, alert. <laughs> now there is a retroactive alert. <laughs> yeah. This is where you either have to push or you, you yeah. pull back and, and he pushes hard, which makes him kind of spill over for the next round, yeah. which you'll see. But that's what you have no, to do no, in no, workouts no. like this to finish sometimes. And no, it no. just even if you aren't as good in the next round, if you get there, that moves you up on the leaderboard so much more than getting stuck in this round. Yeah, a good mental framework for all of these intervals as you're going through is as you're coming off your chest to bar set, going back to your squat cleans, you know you're only doing two rounds and 90 seconds is halfway into yes. the interval. So he had two cleans done at 10.30, which means he has 90 seconds. He's basically at the halfway point, which means he's gonna have to really push to get through. You can kind of have that as a framework for yourself. If you're going through the seven and nine, or you're going through the eight and 12, and you get through one round of it and you look up at the clock and there's 90 seconds left in that interval, you know like, okay, I just did the work for one round in that pace, I need to go faster here. Yeah, I think you did that. I, I noticed that as you were going, you looked up at the clock, and yeah. I think you you were over 90 seconds when you are starting your squat yeah. cleans, but you really did a good job of obviously being a little bit more diligent with your pace. Yeah, this was probably one of the few throwdown workouts I've executed <laughs> according to <laughs> my plan and clean. Yeah, well, How, it took did eight, you, 17 of them. Did you hate everyone cheering you on at the end of that? Oh, it was definitely <laughs> She never talked to you about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it felt like everyone was staring at me. I was like, I just Oh, no, everyone out. was. <laughs> Max was the last one in his heat. Yeah, I it, called it, it a, just... heat, a heat win. <laughs> but I'm still not yeah. that high. You'll see you the got like 60 board. points yeah. or something. <laughs> I'm basically a games athlete now. So now he's in the 12 to 15 minute mark. Yeah, uh, so you notice like he finished that work and then basically started right away. Yeah. There's no rest time built in. So at some point, your rest windows get condensed down where you're doing the last like four rounds for time, essentially. Yep. It's, it's just a tough type psychological thing to deal with. Yeah, it's a doing, gut check on, yeah. the, on the last round. Uh, I like that he did get right back to it. I think he only probably took 15 seconds or so before yeah. he started squat cleans. Yeah, I think where he's losing time here is just the, the speed between reps. Like sure. He's still standing it up pretty good. He still looks like his respiration is, is okay. But, you know, those are probably 10 seconds between lifts or something like that. Um, I mean, it's easier said than done. I know I've been in that position and it looks like his rest times are long. Mine are probably longer, but it's still like those are the details you got to work on is figuring out can you cut one or two seconds off of each one of these or can you start to condense the rest as you're going because you like spilled over and then you can kind of recover while you yeah. work. You have to be pretty fit to do that. Yeah. But you know, those that are trying to be competitive in a workout like this will be able to. Yeah. So one of the things, when you get to this spot, let's say that you spill over on that, that set before, the interval before and you get here, you have to kind of look at the clock and then know 
where you can sprint. And so for him, I mean, he's obviously his chest bars have deteriorated yeah. quite a bit. But if you are efficient at chest bars, once you get there and you only have a minute left, then go for a big set and see how much you can hold on for. Yeah. For almost everybody, I mean, with the exception of probably like games level caliber athletes with chest bars, you're going to get to this point that you for see sure. Luke in right now, where you're doing doubles or maybe it's triples or fours or, or even singles and you need to figure out how to manage the rest period between. So Luke does a double, and it's one, two, three, four. That's a pretty good yeah. rest break. Some of the other ones, definitely not as good, and that's where you start to really lose time. It accumulates so much faster than you think. Yeah, Mia was in his ear saying, you know, get back on the bar, get back on the bar, which I think you need in a workout like this. But again, even if it is you that's singles or doubles or triples, whatever, look at the clock and come up with a game plan and say, I got to maximize my score here because there's going to be another thousand people that are in the same round. It's just like where you end up. Yeah. And also, so I know this happened to me in the previous or maybe two rounds before, no, the previous round? Previous round, yep. Um, and my chest of bars went to singles, and then in the process of doing singles, my heart rate dropped pretty substantially. I couldn't have gone faster because my chest of bars had deteriorated, but my overall global systems kind of recovered, which allowed me to get back to the bar and do some touch and goes. So that might be something to be mindful of. You kind of get this one big separator when you get through an interval, but then there's also all the leaderboard stuff you have to for consider sure. about in the interval that you're in. Yep. So Luke, good job on the workout. Thanks for the demo. Let's look at some scores. All right, so you just saw Luke do the workout. He was in fourth. Top three scores were Joey at 187, Clay at 174, James at 173. On the female side, Colson at 196, best score of the day. Ali at 125, Mia at 94 reps. If you're about to do throwdown number 18, we they got are. some- They are, they're about to. You're gonna do yeah. throwdown 18. You got some tips and strategy from us. There's two movements in this, squat cleans, chest to bar. I think they're pretty straightforward. Squat cleans is gonna be singles for almost everybody until the round that you're either fighting to get through or until the clock's about to expire in the round that you're gonna get capped out of. So that's where I'd go to touch and go. And for the chest of bars, you gotta figure out what's a manageable break number for you and when do you start breaking? Do you do the initial sets as unbroken? Do you start at 3-3? Do you have quick breaks? Do you do a big set and a slow transition? Come up with a plan ahead of time and then try to execute according to that plan relative to your chest to bar capacity. Yeah, I think this is all about pacing. It's gonna be athlete dependent. What I would recommend everyone do, look at the big picture of the workout and then try to reverse engineer it, looking at where your total volume is and then kind of figuring out which round that puts you in and then that be your goal round to get through. So when you get to that round, if it's the the nine to 12 minutes, 12 to 15, whatever it may be, then try to push it on the second round of that set so that you're doing some touch and go cleans and then maybe more aggressive on the chest of bars. Yeah, you gotta have one round that you're kind of fighting just to for make sure. it through. I think for like, if you're gonna finish like 10,000th in the world on a specific workout, that's like the getting through the third round. I think getting through the fourth round for somebody that's kind of sanctional or sanctional team level, and then getting through that fifth round is yeah. where really like individual games level. You have to be pretty high level to get yeah. through it. Um, so that's kind of a framework. Good luck on the workout. This week, Training Think Tank's blog is about statistics in CrossFit, and we expand upon that topic in our classroom. You can check both of those out on our website, trainingthinktank.com. Peace! It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Training Think Tank's YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known what it be known what it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.